Since we just learned about a point or a vector, let's go slightly ahead and understand the next big idea called a line. Right? Um, it may not sound very big, but let's see, let's see, let's see how the idea transpires when we look at 2D, 3D, and higher dimensional spaces. So let's look at what a 2D line is, right? Suppose if this is your x1 axis and this is your x2 axis, let's say a line here, right? If you remember your uh, 10th grade math or 11th grade math, we always wrote our line as y equals to mx plus c, right? If this was x, if my x1 is x, if my x2 is y, I, I could write my y equals to mx plus c where m is the slope and c is the intercept on y axis, right? This is one, one equation of line that we all recall and remember. There's an other equation of line called ax plus by plus c equals to zero. This is called the general form of an equation of a line. And they both are equal and you can prove it because by just rewriting this equation slightly, I can write it as y equals to minus c by b minus a by b x, right? In such a case, what happens is this becomes your c here, right? And your m is nothing but this term here. Right, so th this is called this is called the general form of general equation or the general form of a line. Right, we'll stick to this. We'll stick to this notation because it's easier to interpret, and this is much more general. Right, if if my axes are x one and x two, I can rewrite this equation as a times x one plus b times x two plus c equals to zero. Instead of using a b c, let me use a different notation because if you want to do it in ten dimensions, how would you write it? I'll have to use all the alphabet. If you want to use 100 dimensions, I don't have enough alphabets uh, rare. So I'll, I'll write it as, I can write as W1 X1 plus W2 X2 plus W0 equals to 0. So I made, instead of A, I'm writing W1. Instead of B, I'm writing W2. Instead of C, I'm writing W0, right? This is the equation of a line in 2D, right? What about 3D? Some of you might have learned 3D coordinate geometry in an undergrad first year math course or probably in some cases even undergrad second year math courses, right? For those of you who don't recall it, if I have three axes, right? If I have my axes as x1, x2, and x3, the equivalent of a line, so line is a linear surface in 2D. The equivalent idea of a line in 3D is a plane. Right? And the equation of a plane, for those of you who might remember it, looks like used use looks like this ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to zero. This is this is this is an equation that some of you may be familiar with because you took a math course in your undergrad first year or second year. Let's just generalize it. What this looks like is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w0 equals to zero. This is the equation of a, of a linear surface. This is the equation of a plane. This is a plane, right? This is a line. The idea, the equivalent idea of a line in 2D is plane. So line in 2D is nothing but plane in 3D. Now the immediate question is, what about n-dimensional space? What is it called? It's called something called a hyperplane. Hyperplane is basically a generalization of the concept of a line or a plane to, uh, to higher dimensional space. Because if you think, uh, you, line is called a linear surface because it separates your whole region with, 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 a, with a simple linear structure like a line or a plane in, into two regions. One region on one side of the line, the other region on the other side of the line. Similarly, a plane can separate your 3D surface, your 3D uh, volume into two regions, one above the plane and one below the plane, right? So the immediate question is, what is the equation of a plane in, in n dimensions? Suppose if I have n dimensions, what is the equation of a hyperplane? You could have easily understood that by just looking at the form of this. This is 2D, this is 3D. Now just let's extend it and see what will it be in ND. In ND it will be W0 plus W1X1 plus w2 x2 so on so forth since we have n dimensions wn xn equals to zero this is the equation of an n-dimensional hyperplane now the immediate question we get is this is too cumbersome to write right 
uh, is is there a more concise way of doing it of course there is we can use summation here summation i equals to 1 to n w i x i equals to 0 right now is there a better way to write this still further this is still good this is certainly much more concise way of writing the equation of hyper hyperplane in n dimensional space than writing out this whole expression there is a, there is a slightly more interesting way of doing it which is i can write it as w0 plus Imagine if I create a vector, right, w. This vector, I'll call it w. So those of you who remember how to multiply two vectors or multiply matrices, you'll quickly recognize this. Let's assume I have w1, w2, so on, so forth, wn here. Imagine if I have x1, x2, so on, so forth, xn here. This is, this is nothing but a vector notation. This is nothing but a vector notation. This is nothing but a summation notation, right? I'm just, I'm not changing any formula here. I'm just changing the notation slightly. So what does this product look like? So when you, when you multiply this vector with this vector, those of you who have studied basic matrices and matrix multiplication, probably in your 11th grade or 12th grade, you'll easily recognize this. So this is nothing but W0 plus the first component here gets multiplied with the first component here, right? Which is nothing but W1, X1. And then you add, take the second component, multiply it with the second component, which is W2, X2. And so on, so forth. Take your last component, multiply it with the last component, which is WN, XN equals to zero. So this is a vector notation of writing it. And we'll use this notation a lot. We'll, uh, immediate, immediately after this section, we'll understand what is a dot product and we'll and we'll write this in a much more concise form uh, using vector notation. Now, this vector, I can, since it's this vector, I can think of this as a vector w. I can think of this as a vector x, right? This vector x has n rows, right? It has n rows and it has only one column. This vector w has one row and it has n columns, right? So if you recall the vector, the, the matrix multiplication, so you can multiply one cross n with n cross one to get a one cross one matrix. So those of you who remember simple matrix multiplication will quickly understand that what we have here is nothing but a simple matrix multiplication of a, of a row vector with a column vector, right? So this is, this is how we represent a plane. We look at a, a plane or a hyperplane in n dimensional space. We look at many properties of uh, lines and planes uh, in, in the next few videos.